Well, I'm Don Adams. <laughs> or Johnny Cash, I'm not sure which. And I want to tell you, Jessica and Veronica, I'm from Jasper, Texas, right over there by Louisiana. I want to tell you girls, y'all stay out of Jasper County. We handle our boats over there the way we want to, and we don't need any help. Glenn Hager, where are you, Glenn? I want you to know <clears throat> that Glenn Hager is one of the finest controllers of public account that we have had in my tenure here, which has been about 50 years. <laughs> now, why was that funny? <laughs> <laughs> Glenn, uh, and I told Glenn coming in here, I'm a yellow dog Democrat. And... Uh, I voted today by mail, and I voted for Glenn Hager because he deserves to be returned to office, Glenn. <clears throat> well, I want to tell you that, uh, uh, Fred, I actually do have some notes. I won't use them because I don't have my glasses. I want to tell you... Uh, what a singular privilege it is to me to introduce the next person who has been awarded the James Madison Award. Brian, you know who James Madison was? <laughs> I, I actually wrote the First Amendment, but he has his name on it. <laughs> Laura? Where's Laura? Laura, do you know what the chicken said to the squirrel? Huh? Well, I'll tell you before this is over. Speak, <laughs> speaking of chickens, when I was a member of the Senate, <clears throat> my family and I, uh, by the way, uh, my sweet friend that runs this organization told me I only had 45 minutes, <laughs> but I... <clears throat> but I'll try to give some of it back. I, I don't want to infringe on Laura's two-minute speech. <clears throat> I was a member of the Senate and over in East Texas. And you can't tell from my voice. I know I'm from East Texas. But <clears throat> the State Fair, the East Texas State Fair, was down in Bowen. And uh, my wife and I took our children down to the fair. And I want you to know that was a, a great concession on my part and my wife's part because we both felt like that if they ever give the world an enema or a colonoscopy, it'll be in Beaumont. <laughs> anyway, we went down there, and when you walked in the when you walked in the the place, there were three cages there with three chickens in them. And uh, you could play tic-tac-toe with those chickens for 50 cents. And I thought, well, golly, I'm going to do that. So I put my first 50 cents in there. And quicker than a minnow can swim a dipper, that chicken beat me at tic-tac-toe. <laughs> well, I tried it on the second chicken, and that chicken beat me too. And I tried it on the third chicken, and that third chicken beat me too. So, Laura, that gives you an idea of the intellect of the person that's been helping you all this time with these bills. <laughs> Laura is a great human being, and I'm prejudiced. I call her my little sister. She's a great wife. She's a great mother. And she is a great lawyer and I'm proud to be associated with her. Laura presses the collar. Now I'm sure that there are a lot of folks out there, <clears throat> Joe, that don't know what pressing the collar is so I'm going to enlighten you about that. Back when they loaded logs on the trailers in East Texas, they didn't have tractors so they loaded them with mules. And if the mule was working hard, he was pressing the collar. So you always wanted to have a mule that pressed the collar. 
Laura presses the collar. Now, now I'm not calling Laura Muley, <laughs> but I will say she is damned hard-headed. <laughs> the, <clears throat> she is a partner in the very good law firm of Haynes and Boone, and her practice is a First Amendment practice, a media practice, and an anti-slap practice. When we passed the anti-slap bill, she had to tell me what that was. I, you know, I'm a, I'm a sore back lawyer. I didn't know what anti-slap was. She uh, wrote the reporter's privilege bill. Now she turned, she called that something else. I, I, I said, Laura, you know, there are 181 people over there and they aren't all dumb. Uh, you can call it what you want to, but it's a reporter's privilege and that's what we want to pass. And I learned a lot about Laura during that session. That's the first session we worked together. Todd Hunter from Corpus, who is a great member of the House and a great friend of the First Amendment, was helping us, and he called a meeting to mediate between us and the district attorneys. And we went in there and sat down, and there were three district attorneys in there, Todd and me, and somebody else I don't remember. And uh, I looked up at those district attorneys, and you looked in their eyes, and you could see cell doors closing. Whomp! They were mean, and here was little old Laura, and it's always been my practice in negotiations that there has to be a leader. You can't have two or three people negotiating at the same time, and uh, so I was sitting back. Laura took the lead. Well, in my 40 or 50 years of trying lawsuits and mediation, I'm a mediator too, uh, I found that at some point, and it's just, it's sort of instinctive, it's sort of a, something that you learn over years, that some point you've pushed as hard as you can push, and you need to sort of back off and, and uh, try to come to an agreement. Well, I'll tell you what, Laura was pushing those boys like a D8 Caterpillar tractor, and, uh, and they were just getting steelier-eyed by the minute. And so something came up, and I said, uh, I think that's a good idea. And Laura said, he's, it's not his practice. He's not in the practice area. Well, I'll tell you what, when the bus ran over my hand and then ran over my foot because she threw me under the bus, I kept my mouth shut. <laughs> and uh, and we, we did. We passed that bill through the Senate the first time. We were riding a slow horse in the house, and we didn't pass it through the house. But the second try, we passed it through both houses. And it's, it is a good piece of legislation. It's something that, that people that are charged with and that have the, have the desire to keep people informed about what's going on in the government, it gives them some protection. It gives, uh, it gives sources protection. I guess the next thing we passed was uh, the anti slap bill. After she explained it to me, it sounded like a pretty damn good idea. And we passed it. The next thing we passed was uh, the defamation something or something bill. <laughs> You know, I'm kind of like Bill Moore. Bill Moore was in the Senate with me. He was a senator from Brazos County. And you'd ask him a question about a bill, and he said, they don't pay me to read these bills. They pay me to pass them. <laughs> well, <clears throat> that's kind of the way I felt about the Andy Slap bill. And <laughs> anyway, we passed it. And then... The last successful effort we had was not this last session, but the session before, where Laura wrote and passed 
the uh, third party allegation bill, which totally makes sense to me. Even from Jasper, Texas, it makes sense for me. And that is if you report on an allegation that has been made and you're truthful about the allegation, you cannot be sued for defamation. Even though the investigation turns out that the report was wrong. T totally logical. Laura has done many, many other things in her life. Well, I got one more chicken story, Laura, before I tell you what the squirrel, what the chicken said to the squirrel. There was a man in the house. I'm not over my 45 minutes, am I? Uh, there was a, uh, am I? There was a man in the house named, uh, well, I forget what his name was. You know, you can forget those house members pretty easy, Glenn. <clears throat> and... Uh, Anyway, after he, he was one of the founders of Texas Instruments, and he was sitting, we called him Daddy Warbucks. And uh, we were sitting around one day, and he said, boys, I got a story to tell you. He said, I was foreman of the grand jury up there in Dallas, and said uh, there was a little guy on there, just a little bitty guy on the grand jury, and he did not say anything at all for three months, not a word. The last case we considered was a bestiality case where some guy had had relations with his chicken in uh, Fair Park. And we began to hear that to proceed to indict him for bestiality. And that little guy sat up and he said, well, it was his chicken. <clears throat> Took you a while to catch it, didn't it, Michael? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, it is a distinct privilege to me to introduce one of the 40 young women that was designated the 40 finest young lawyers in the United States and a woman who has given her all. I fell in love with the First Amendment too. Laura fell in love with the First Amendment, I think when she was 10 years old. I was very fortunate. I came from a family of lawyers. She came from a family of engineers and rose above it. It's, it's unusual for someone 10 years old to know what they want to do. But Laura did. I did. Laura did. And Laura has taken that passion, and she's taken that charm, and she's taken that intellect to support First Amendment causes in the Texas legislature. And that's not the most popular thing in the world to do. It's my sincere privilege to introduce to you Laura Prather, the, the recipient of the James Madison Award for this year. Laura. Chicken said nothing to the squirrel. You know chickens can't talk. Okay, so I knew that was going to be dangerous having Don do that introduction. But 
did it anyway because, as many of you know, if you were here three years ago when Don won this award, how much he means to me and how much he means to this organization. So thank you, Don. We love you. Um, I'm going to shift gears a little bit and tell you all some little known facts about James Madison. First of all, he was the smallest president of the United States. He was only five foot four inches and less than 100 pounds. Smaller than me, only goes to prove what I've always told my mother, good things come in little packages. So um, the second thing is that he was introduced to his wife, Dolly, by the infamous Aaron Burr. Those of you that know your US history or have seen Hamilton know that he's the one that shot Hamilton. Before that, Madison had worked tirelessly with Hamilton and with John Jay to write the Federalist Papers. Those were the anonymous series of articles that explained why the United States Constitution needed to be ratified. And before all of that, he had established himself as a deal maker. And that's what I wanna focus on. This is a man who saw the importance of getting people together in a room, getting people from all walks of life together and listening, listening to their perspectives and talking through the differences and coming to a solution together. He did this originally with the Mount Vernon Conference where everyone was fighting over disputes with regard to navigating the Potomac River. But he used that as a model for future interstate conferences. And then he went to Congress and he said, please authorize the Philadelphia Convention. And that's where he introduced to the states what we know now as our Constitution. That's how he got the name, the father of the Constitution. So following his example, 200 years later, this organization is doing the same thing. I'm so proud of being a part of the Freedom of Information Foundation of Texas because FOI Foundation embraces Madison's philosophy and what he did so successfully back then in bringing people together. We reach out to groups from all sides to get their perspectives and we try to find common ground, common ground in the First Amendment arena, common ground in the open government arena. And we did this successfully, as, as Don outlined. We did, the, did this successfully when we passed the reporter's privilege, when we passed the anti-slap bill, when we passed the retraction statute. And I firmly believe we can do this, again, with our efforts to reform the Texas Public Information Act. We have some really strong supporters over at the Capitol on our side. Chairman Hunter was mentioned, Senator Watson, Representative Capriglione, and others. And we owe a tremendous debt of gratitude to them. But unlike James Madison, who had sprawling plantations and significant resources, we're not wealthy. <laughs> we're a nonprofit. Um, we don't have vast sums of money like our opposition. Um, we're kind of scrappy. I refer to us over at the Capitol as the bad news bears. You know, we show up in our tattered uniforms and we have our broken equipment and we still manage to make a difference. And we do so because we're nimble and we're inclusive. And we show through our drive and our strength of resolve that we can get things done. Now, like Don also mentioned, like all things in life, um, there's ups and downs. We had a string of fabulous victories, but last session was not our best. We had some significant defensive wins, for sure, and a lot of, a lot of working over at that pink building is defense, that's for sure. But we were pretty much shut out offensively. But we're, we'll be back, and we're gonna be back with an expanded roster this session. We've gone back to our basic principles, the James Madison principles, and we're doing what we do best. And we've built the Sunshine Coalition, which if you were there this morning, you heard a little bit about it. It's a group of organizations from both sides of the aisle that are all dedicated to reforming the TPIA. We've got 
We had representatives there this morning from CPPP, from Texas Public Policy Foundation, from the League of Women Voters, from ACLU. These may be organizations that agree on nothing, nothing else, but they agree that it is important to know what your government is doing. It's a nonpartisan issue, it's a citizenry issue. They believe, and we all believe, that taxpayers have the fundamental right to know how their money is being spent and what their government is doing. So, this issue actually has become so important, thankfully, that it is part of the Republican and the Democratic Party platform. It's our job to hold those lawmakers accountable to this pledge. And this is where my parents come in. Don already told you my dad's an engineer. My mom's an accountant. And so other than just naturally being OCD, which comes from that makeup, what my dad taught me was to never take no for an answer. He is tremendously tenacious. He's the guy that, you know, he hears an answer that he doesn't like. He wants to talk to the next person. He also fixes everything, and he thinks outside the box, and he figures out a way to get things done. And that's often what you have to do at the legislature. You've got to be nimble. You've got to be able to figure out a way to get things done, even if it's not the initial plan that you had. Be nimble, be able to adapt. My mother, She's the empathetic one. She's the one that taught me to look at things from other people's perspectives. She's a two-time cancer survivor. She also taught me you can do anything. So to them, I'm very grateful because those character traits have helped me tremendously over at that pink building. But back to the honor and why this means so much to me. It means so much to me because I care deeply about this organization, about its mission, about the people that support it, about the fact that our strength is in getting people from all walks of life together to talk about their differences and find common ground, common ground that enhances free speech and open government rights. But more importantly, we all in this room want to be informed citizens. We want to trust our government. But we can't do that without access to information. Access to information about what our government is doing. So what I've seen in the past, and what I know will be our future, is that when we really believe in something, it gives us a sense of purpose. And having that purpose, we can work miracles. And I'll close by telling you the motto of our Sunshine Coalition. And that is, democracy dies in shadows, and it's our job, everyone in this room, every citizen of this state, to let some sunshine in. Thank you.